Hello there, you beautiful 3D artists. So, we've made it to what is going to be my final step in this Mastering UV Mapping series. And we're going to be doing the most complicated UV unwrap that we've done so far, which is going to be this handsome little teddy bear. So we are going to be using some similar techniques to previous steps, but what's going to make this one different is that we're going to be doing some stacking of the shells, which will allow us to basically double the pixel density we can get out of our textures. And then as a bit of a bonus, when we're done, we'll take the bear into Substance Painter and make him look really cool. If you want to use the same bear that I'm using, then follow the link in the description below and you'll be able to download this along with all the other models and textures that I've used in this series so far. Or, if you want to make your own, then this teddy bear is actually one that I made in one of my classes following an exercise that was created by Mr. H. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description too. Right, we better get stuck in. One of the first things we're going to do, because we want to have it so that we're only going to UV map one side of this guy, and then we're going to mirror the geometry, and that's going to allow us to double up on our texture space, essentially. So the first job is to get half of him deleted. So what I'm going to do is just hop into my four view, and I need my front view, ideally. There it is. I'm going to pop him into face mode and delete this half here. Doesn't really matter which half you delete, but I always prefer to delete the one on the left. So there's that gone. Back into object mode, and I'm also going to delete the other eye. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so at this stage, I'm ready to start UV mapping. The first thing I'm going to do is a projection. So I'll go into this create option here, and I'm just going to choose automatic. Boom. And there we get lots of pieces not too bad but i want to get this down to fewer pieces uh, and I, I want to be in control of how it's all put together so the first thing i'll do is go into edge mode select all the edges with a big marquee selection and i'm going to stitch them all together so i'm going to go into cut and sew and i'm going to do stitch together boom and that's going to create this awful looking mess which is in this case exactly what we're looking for now what we want to do is go in and cut the seams where we want them. So to do that, I'm going to work on the bear, which is why I've got this side-by-side -side view. Uh, and I think I'm going to start on the leg. So into edge mode. And I'm going to cut the leg off here. So I might have to just work my way around to get the selection. So there we go. We can see that I've got that loop there selected. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to cut the leg in half. So I'll click there, go around to the back and double click there and then Maya will fill in the rest of that loop. So that's gonna cut the leg off of the main mesh and it's also gonna separate it into two sides. At that stage, I'm going to cut my UVs. At that stage, you'll see that I get some seams exactly where I want them. Next up, I'm going to do the arm in a very similar way. So into edge mode, choose where I want to cut it off. And I think I'm gonna choose just here. So let's make sure that I get all of this selected lovely and I'm going to click here and go all the way around to the other side double click here and that's going to separate the top from the bottom and I'm doing that because that allows me to texture everything if I did it down the shoulder this way then that I wouldn't be able to get like the inside of the thumb it wouldn't work very well so I'll cut that that's some more seams that I'm happy with Next, I want to cut his head off. So let's do that. Go into edge mode. I'll double click there and I'm going to cut it. That's lovely. Uh, and then I'm going to cut his ear off and cut this into a few pieces. So I'm going to cut the ear on this edge loop here. So let's see. Make sure that's gone all the way around. Yep. And I'm going to cut here to here. So I get a front and back of the ear. And I also... You don't necessarily need to do this, but I, I want to do it this way. I'm going to get this edge loop inside, because when I texture, I'm going to do this inside a different color. And having it as a separate shell makes it a little bit easier. And then I'm going to go to cut. Let's have a look what my shells are looking like now. Yep, that's getting there. I now need to cut the head into some pieces. And I'm going to cut the front from the back. So back into edge mode. And I'm going to start a selection here and go up to there. 
and then I'm going to finish it off over here from here to there and that will allow me to cut the front from the back and I also again for the same reason that I did the inside of the ear I'm going to cut into the snout area and that's going to allow me to put a different texture there and I want my snout to start here I think so that didn't work well let's try again double click on that and that's gone all the way around so I'm happy enough with that so we'll put a cut in and I'll cut the nose off as well there we go and cut so we're nearly there now the last thing I want to do is cut um, the torso in half so to do that I'm going to be into edge mode one final time so there's one edge there that's going to need to be done and then from here to here and also make sure I get nice and involved in his crotch there we go oh that didn't go well there we go right so now I've got two selected there all selected there yep and that will do it so I'll cut that so at that stage that should be everything done hopefully but it may go wrong and if it does I'll repair it but that looks okay so at this stage I need to unfold all these shells so we're going to shell mode over here select them all and we're going to unfold and we'll just click on the unfold option okay so that looks okay and then to make it a little bit easier to see we'll try and lay these out as well so we'll go to arrange and layout and we will go to layout and see what that gives us okay so that's pretty good something about this shell here doesn't look right let's turn this on you can see it's got a bit of overlapping going on there so we'll get this shell here we'll pull it out and we'll use the optimize tool on it there we go and that brings it out much better and while I'm at it I think I'm going to run the optimize brush over everything else make sure that it's all working as expected maybe we'll go into shell mode first select all the shells and we'll just run the optimize brush over them and that's just going to straighten everything up when we're done yeah so that's pretty nice okay at this stage then I want to lay them all out again so let's select all the shells and we'll do a layout and that's going to get my pixel density about right and then I'm going to turn my squares on and I want to get an idea for which way my shells are facing so I want to try and get the squares on here as straight as possible so let's go into shell mode and I'm going to use a fairly busy texture so it won't matter too much if I get them perfectly straight but I want them mostly straight so that's okay on that side where's the other side of the foot and we'll try and get this straight and I'm also rotating them around so that they're recognizable as well so the feet are kind of facing this way to make it a bit easier let's have a look at the top of the arm let's get that pretty much straight yep same with the bottom of the arm yep okay let's get the torso so one of the things that I'm going to do for this torso which will introduce a little bit of distortion but because there's quite a noticeable seam down the front when I mirror this over I'm going to try and get this edge straight so I'm going to go into UV mode and I'm just going to click that top UV there and then double click the one at the bottom and then what I'll do is click on straighten UVs and that does put a straight edge on it but it does introduce some stretching so I'm just going to try to get that a bit better so that looks okay there they're now pretty much straight so it does introduce a little bit of distortion but the main seam here should now be pretty much invisible which is pretty important so we'll just put that back into shell mode so I'm happy enough with that if you're worried about your scene here you can also do the same thing and straighten your your UVs there which actually 
yeah, I'll do that. Let's go into UV mode. And we'll get the top one, the bottom one. We'll straighten the UVs. And make sure that hopefully the squares haven't become rectangles. They're pretty square like that. Okay, so I'm happy with that particular part. But I need to repeat that for this shell here. So let's get... I think I'm just going to straighten it up a little bit first. I kind of should have done that with the other side as well, but it will be fine. Then we're going to go to UV and we'll straighten this side. Straighten shell. And let's just make sure. Yeah, straighten shell is okay. So we'll do that. And then what we need to do is straighten these UVs here as well. So let's straighten those UVs and check that that hasn't become a rectangle. No, nope, that's okay. So I'm happy with those two shells. They're pretty straight. Okay, so what I want to do for the ears is I'm actually happy with um, the squares going at like a diagonal angle. That being said, I am still going to rotate them around so they're pretty straight so that I can recognize what they are. So there's the outside of the ear. Here's the back of the ear. And get these pretty straight. And somewhere, there'll be the inside of the ear, which I believe is this bit. Yep, so we'll spin that around as well. Lovely, okay. And I think that just leaves the, the bits of the head, really. So let's find this shell here. Here it is. So I'm not going to try too hard to get this perfect because I'll never do it. So I'm just going to try and get it fairly straight here. So I'm just going to rotate to about there. I'm happy enough with that. Then I'm going to look at the back of the head. I'll do something similar. I'm not going to worry too much about the seam on the back of the head since you won't see it much. And then finally the snouty bit. And I'm going to be looking at my bear here to try and work out when this looks mostly straight. About there. So I've tried to get it straight here. And that will do it. So I've now oriented all these pieces to where I want them. So I'm going to be in shell mode. Select them all. And I want to lay them out one final time. So we'll go into modify and I'm going to go to the layout options this time. So this prescale world is important. I do want that. But what I want to turn off this time is this rotate. I want that to be on none because I've just spent some time rotating these to how I want them. So with that said, I can now click on layout UVs and that will pack all my shells as closely together as it can do it without rotating them. So that's pretty close. So now I'm just going to repeat the process, but much more quickly on this little fella here. So let's go into object mode to get his eye. We'll just do an automatic map. We'll select everything in edge mode. Select them all. Then we're going to sew them together. Cut and sew and stitch together. And then what I'll do is go into edge mode. I'm just going to turn the squares off for a minute so I can see what I'm doing. And double click there and then cut. At that stage, I can go into shell mode and do an unfold on those. So they now look okay. They've both unfolded pretty well. I'll perform a layout on them just to get the size consistent. So click on layout and they're now pretty much good to go. Although that being said, there's a strange bit of distortion happening here. So let's just go in with our optimize tool Give it a little brush over. That looks much better. And now, what I'll do is go into object mode. I'm going to select everything. So here are all my shells. Now I need to get these all to fit onto one UV sheet. So, I'm going to select all of my shells again. We're going to do a layout. So, let's go layout. And now everything fits. So all it's done really, the, the layout of the bear stayed the same. 
but it's added the, the front and back of the eye. And if I really wanted to, to increase my density a little bit more, I could stack the two eye pieces. But because there's plenty of room for those anyway, I don't need to. Okay, so all that is left for me to do now is to put the bear back together. So let's turn the colours off. We'll select our bear in object mode. We're going to go to mesh and mirror. Open the settings. And by default, this looks like it's set up okay because we're going to be mirroring over the x-axis in the negative direction. And we do want to merge the border vertices. So we'll give that a try. Let's mirror. And he's been put back together. So we'll just check that there's no edge smooth increase where we put him back together. Now that's pretty good. And we just need to duplicate this eye as well. So for that, what I'm going to do is hit Control and D. And then on Translate X, I'm just going to put a minus value in there. And that should move it over to the other side. It didn't. Should we try that again? I'm going to put a minus value in there. There we go. And then I just need to sort out the rotation so that it matches up with the other side. So I'm going to reverse the Y axis on my rotate. So let's go minus whatever number I had there. And that then should be pretty good. Yeah. Okay, so now we've put him back together. He's got two eyes, a whole body, but you can see we're still only using half of the UV space. The only thing that will be different now, if we turn the colors on, is for some of the bear, it's showing us that it's reversed. And often you don't want that, but in this case, because we're trying to cut down on the amount of texture space used, it is exactly what we want. So now all that's left to do is get it into a texturing program and uh, reap the rewards of our hard work. So let's do just that. I'm going to go to File, Export Selection. So I'm going to Substance Painter, so I'm going to export as an FBX. I'll put it into the uh, UV mapping folder that I'm sharing with everyone. I'm going to call it uh, Bear uh, for Substance Painter. So I'm leaving smoothing groups on, but I'm leaving everything else. And then I'll just export the selection. And now that's ready for Substance Painter. Okay, so here we are in Substance Painter. Let's get it set up and ready to do a bit of quick texturing. I'll start with changing the view to include the 3D and 2D so we can see what's happening in our UV map. And then we'll bring in the bear. So file, new. I'm just going to leave all the defaults, but just bring in the, the bear. And we'll look in the UV mapping folder, scenes, and there it is. Bear for Substance Painter. Open. And click on OK. There he is. Beautiful little guy. He's good to go. And here's our wonderful UV map. So the first thing I'll do is just bake all the maps. There we go. You don't strictly need to do that for what we're doing, but if you want to go further with the texturing and you know have it work on the cavities and stuff, then you might find that useful. Okay, so let's throw some textures on him and make him look really cool. Right, I'm going to look for some kind of fabric. Let's see what we've got in the materials. I think I'm going to go with this fabric knitted sweater. So I'm just going to throw that to the top of the layer stack. There it is. And then what I want to do is change the color. So we'll go for something kind of brown because he's, he's a teddy bear. Why wouldn't he be brown? So let's go for a nice kind of deep chocolatey brown. Lovely. Let's just add a bit of saturation to it. That looks nice. Very nice. And let's just turn the UV scale up a little bit. Let's go for 1.5. Yeah, I like that. And I only want this to go in some places. So I will add a white mask to this. And then I'm going to use the polygon fill tool to paint where I don't want this to happen. So don't want it on the eyes. There we go. Don't want it inside the ear. And you can see as I'm doing it, because of the way we set up our UV map, I only have to do it to one object and it happens on both sides. And I don't want it on the nose. Okay, so that's good. 
Next thing I'll do is duplicate this layer and I'm going to make the color lighter. Yeah, that looks cool. And then I'll add a black mask and with my polygon fill tool, I'm going to paint where this time I do want this texture to be applied. So in this case, the inside of the ear, which is just there and around the snouty area as well, which I need to find. Oh, here it is. Yes. So let's fill this with our different color. Beautiful. So far, so good. He's starting to look like a teddy bear, is he not? He is. He looks beautiful. Okay, next thing I want is something on his nose. So let's look for some kind of leather material for this one. We'll have this rough leather, I think. So I'm going to now drag that to the top. Ooh, nice. I'm going to add... Uh, I'm going to change the color to black. I'll add a black mask so that it's not affecting everywhere. And then with my polygon fill, I'll tell it to only affect the nose. Beautiful. And then lastly, I just need to hit the eyes with a bit of plastic. So let's search for the plastic in the materials. And I think I'm going to go for this matte plastic. I don't want it to be too shiny. So we'll drag that to the top. Change the color to be in black. And get the uh, roughness roughly where I want it. I'm mostly focusing on the buttons here, not the fact that I'm creating some kind of gimp bear. So there we go, that looks nice. And then we do black mask. And with the polygon fill, let's uh, let's paint his eyes. So zoom, get that. And I'll just get this bit here, just in case it's visible. And uh, voila, we've UV mapped and textured our bear. So if you're any good with Substance Painter, you now know that you could really go round and do a lot more with this. Uh, in fact, I will do one more thing. We're not done. Let's give him a little tummy, little tummy shape. So we're going to go back to this lighter colour on the mask. And instead of using my uh, polygon fill, I'm going to use the paintbrush. And this time I'll paint directly onto the bear. Here he is. And let's give him... Oh, let's make sure I'm painting with the right colour. Paint with white. There we go. And we're going to give him a nice round tummy. Oh, that's beautiful. There we go. So, he's now done. So now you can export your textures out of here and put them into whichever 3D package you want to use. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this UV mapping series that I've been lovingly crafting for you. I'm not intending on creating any more steps, but if you feel that I've left something important out, drop it in the comments and I may add a few more steps to this if they're required. If you've gone through all five steps, congratulations. Hopefully you now feel more confident with UV mapping. If you do, let me know in the comments. That was the point of putting these videos on the internet in the first place. If you want to continue learning, then I recommend that you check out Plural Site. They've got some really good courses on Maya, also Substance Painter, creating 3D art and animation in general. It's a really good resource. And if you want to use my link in the description below, then you can get a 10 day free trial. If you'd like to help me to continue making tutorial series like this one, then please consider joining my Patreon campaign it really does help me to keep doing this and the more people that support me the more time I can put into doing this which results in more videos more knowledge shared so if you could do that that would be super appreciated and I think that's where I'm gonna leave it thank you so much for watching keep an eye out for more videos and I will see you in the next one toodle pip